There are some people who try to claim that the current way of looking at the political spectrum is false. This includes people like Rock and Mr. E and a number of others who think they've taken the red pill, which in their minds make them righteous and infallible. Because you know, the red pill, which they look at almost as if they're part of the biblical children's horror story that evangelizes on the idea of original sin with Adam and Eve and eating the forbidden fruit. Because you know, it's not the blue pill, it's the forbidden fruit or something. So here's their viewpoint of what they believe the actual political spectrum is. In this infographic, I moved anarchy over to the right. In the article this infographic comes from, they try to claim that anarchy is on the left because, you know, gang rule. Well, if gangs rule, it actually becomes a different type of government because, you know, let's not be accurate or anything. But all you have to do is take the revised political spectrum and turn it 90 degrees clockwise and voila! You more or less have the vertical axis of the political compass. This makes these faux red pill evangelists who try to redefine the political spectrum look like idiots. But when looking at this rendition and labeling of the political spectrum, I noticed something that seemed really out of place. But was it really out of place? So I started to do some research on this. Over and over again I saw information that basically shows that Nazism is National Socialism and not just by name. Nationalistic Authoritarian Style Socialism. Something interesting about all this is that there are some slight similarities of National Socialism to things that are going on in our current political climate of permanently offended people who are demanding segregation for left-wing purposes and forcing every demographic to act, look, and think a particular way or be shunned. Some of the things I've seen people say are the differences between National Socialism and Fascism is that Fascism doesn't make businesses belong to the government. It instead tells businesses exactly how they should do things. Well, under Hitler, both of these things occurred. The government took over some things, and in other areas it told businesses exactly how to do everything. So that's not really a valid way to break apart the differences. Other people claim that fascism is based on political ideologies, while National Socialism is based on racial hatred. It's based on breaking people apart via their racial demographics. Okay, so let's look at what's happening at colleges with all this demand for segregation based on race, with all white people being labeled as racist, and hatred of all of those who are not oppressed, or labeled as oppressed, with a desire to eventually have the laws changed to break people apart via their demographics, and to enforce a strict code or strictly enforcing stereotypes for each of the demographics. Now this may not sound like National Socialism, but it is doing similar things in that it is declaring people's values based on the demographics they fit. This is a type of authoritarian socialism, a type of socialism that has yet to be properly named, or at least I sure don't know what its name is, since it seems to be a relatively new type of socialism. Maybe we should call it Essentialist Multiculturalist Socialism, or EMS for short. Everything must smell. So what is our line of attack against EMS? If we promote more of an anarcho-socialist or democratic socialist type of view, how do we call out these EMS idiots for what they're doing while still promoting the leftist values we find important? This is a question of our time. And for those who want to claim that this entire video is an attempt to Godwin social justice warriors, let me ask you, do you consider the Nazis to have been national socialists or fascists? Do we really give the word fascist any thought other than it being a pejorative to use against the right wing? Do we really analyze what the Nazis were? It's a fair assessment, in my opinion, to compare the way that Donald Trump is campaigning for presidency with the way that Hitler originally campaigned. It's not saying that Donald Trump is a Nazi or is the new Hitler, but that he's using similar techniques during his campaign to get support. So really, there's never going to be another Nazi party that will actually take hold. But there could be another party, or political ideology that takes over an existing party, 
that uses some of the same techniques or has some of the same characteristics. I think it's important that we remain vigilant in making sure that history doesn't repeat itself in those areas, including if reality shows that history is going to repeat itself in different ways simply because the situations are different. But the pattern that emerges could be exactly the same. <laughs>